All right, Street Outlaw fans, today marks a milestone for us. It is our 10 year anniversary of doing Street Outlaws. Since premiering of the very first episode on Discovery Channel, uh, it's a big deal for us. It's a huge deal, especially when Asian and I thought we wouldn't make it out of our first episode. Yeah. Let alone our first season. Uh, we thought it, man, Orange County Choppers did 10 years. Yes. If we could do 10 years, we did it. That's right. Right? So I, at this point, man, I, I'm grateful for the for the run we've had. I don't think the ride's over anytime soon. Um, heck, we're out here right now in Virginia doing an MPK. Um, so, I mean, heck, we got 13, 14 more of these to do. Does that mean we can quit? No, 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 no. You can quit if you want to. I, well, I don't want to. Okay, then you don't have but to. But we could. Yep. So, hey, we just appreciate all the fans and everybody for tuning in, watching, all the loyalty. Um, thank you, guys. We literally wouldn't be here if it wasn't for people watching the show. Ten years. Exactly Damn, right, dude. man. All the fans and all the hard work that all the Street Outlaws put in. We made it 10 years, and that is unbelievable. And all we got to show for it is this Casio watch. <laughs> That's all we got right there. So thank you, Discovery Channel. How come I didn't get one of those? No, no, no. They already sent one. We got to, we got to split so we it. We got to share? We got to split it. Thank you for well, it's 10 my, years. It's my turn to the, wear it. No, 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 no. I, I think Asian? you get a Jelly of the Month Club gift certificate. <laughs> so we'll start with uh, the show Street Outlaws first aired June 10th, 2013. So we're coming up on the 10-year anniversary of you guys sharing part of your lives on television with the rest of the world. What was it like for you right before the first camera showed up to film here in the 405? What were you guys doing for a living and for fun back then? Well, way back then, we were wondering if we were even gonna get a show a month before they came out to film, which the first filming day was February 1 of 13. Hmm. Uh, we were curious, yet we hadn't heard from him. We didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, I was driving nails and wood, hanging trim, cabinets. Uh, what were you up to, I, Asian? I was graphic designing. I was working for an e-commerce business, a uh, local uh, land cruiser, working for a local entrepreneur. Um, life was actually pretty good. Hell, you had two or three jobs, didn't you? Yeah, we were doing some side <laughs> hustles. Uh, you know, we were doing some sign shop stuff and stuff like that. But I mean, it was, I, I thought life was good, man. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't need a change. Um, right. I thought this television show thing that they pitched was just going to be temporary. I thought it was going to be fun to do, um, but then that's it. I thought we were going to make one episode. Yeah. And, and then that's it. I yeah. mean, how interesting could racing be to a viewer? Yeah. You know, after they see us all race one time, is that enough? And I think at the time, also, a lot of the guys were getting out of the game. I mean, a lot of the 405ers were having kids. That's right. I mean, they had kids. That's right. And the race cars were on jack stands. Yeah. And motors were out. And That's right. And money was thin. And here comes this thing where they want to shine the light on on uh, what we've been doing, um, but we actually hadn't been doing it uh, for about six months. And you know, the show opportunity comes along. Everybody jumps into work mode. Um, yeah. I have to say that the success of the show is they happen to stumble across uh, a a team of guys that were all hard workers. Yeah, uh, because the pitch, the original pitch was blue collar guys that work during the day yeah. that street race at night. That's kind of what they that, had. That was us. That's kind of what that they was had. Us. Yeah, for sure. Um, so no, it was, it was pretty normal. It, we were basic bitches before those cameras showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so after the show started airing, at what point did you notice your lives begin to change? Was there a specific moment that made you realize that your old life was over and a new life had begun? I'd say after the after the show aired, it immediately got weird, right? Because we did our first event at Thunder Valley, right? And we then people knew us that we didn't know, right? We're like, okay, because yeah, the farm truck had a little bit of notoriety. We'd show up like, oh, we saw you on Pink's All Out yeah, or right, YouTube. Yeah. Um, the farm truck had its own little following, very small though, uh, with the inception of the internet and. When the show came out, we became... Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I fixed it. <laughs> that was quick, Damn, man. That was quick. Damn, dude. <laughs> uh, we, we became somebody that we weren't sure yet who we were becoming, right? Because it was like, oh, this is kind of cool. It, it was cool being recognized. We thought we were being recognized for street racing, but we really weren't. We were being recognized for being famous. And that's still the case now for most reality stars. Uh, they're not famous for what they do. They're famous for being on television. They're famous for being famous. And we didn't know that yet. So there was, there was a lot of unknown unknowns. It was just Asian and I out there with a 
selling shirts out of the back of the farm truck. And the line went all the way across the parking lot uh, and blocked the pits from race cars getting through. And it was chaos out there. There must have been, I don't know, three or four hundred people in our line. And I just couldn't believe what was happening. And they were all standing in that line to meet Farm Truck and Asian. Uh, it was definitely a pinch me moment. You know, I, I get chills every time I think about it. And uh, we, I think we signed autographs for uh, 13 hours in a row. Yeah. So I remember the night before thinking I needed to make stickers. I was making those 405 stickers. Oh, that's right. And I'm like, oh, I, I stayed up till 3 a.m. I'm like, oh, maybe just make a couple. I sold all out of stickers. It was the first time I ever sold out <laughs> stupid stickers. And I, right. I, I made a thousand dollars that night. And I was so happy. I was yes. so I was counting that money. I was yes. like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> it was so awesome. But yeah, I thought that was it. I thought that was it. That was right. it. It'll never get better than that, that. We were just running on pure adrenaline, oh, yeah. standing there for 13 hours. Stupid. You know, we were both floating away because we had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't make it to the bathroom. Eating beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that was the moment for, for me and, uh, and you. Yeah. What has this fame or recognition now allowed you to experience that maybe you wouldn't have had the opportunity to do without it? It's gotten us a lot of recognition. Uh, a lot of sponsors wanted to help us. Um, and that was something very difficult to get. Uh, every racer dreams of getting sponsors and getting a little bit of help. That's true. Uh, That's true. And yeah. a lot of sponsors wanted to give us parts. Mm -hmm. uh, we're grateful for every one. Uh, shout out to all of them. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the sponsors, there would be no way that we'd be able to do the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because the show, everyone thinks if you're on TV, you're making a million dollars. Well, you're not, you know. Uh, we had to figure out a way to make our money, and it was through merchandise sales and sponsors. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be doing the show. Yeah, you know, and I kind of saw the show from an entrepreneurial standpoint where it was a bit of a steroid shot where, you know, you can, you can take... Uh, supplements when you're working out but you still have to work out you still have to put the work in and so it kind of gave us this injection of momentum and it, it fast fast tracked us branding wise business wise notoriety wise sponsorship wise sure. um, it gave us this this quick launch pad um, to be able to propel us forward really quickly um, almost too quickly sometimes um, but it gave us these these opportunities that we could just hold on to and you know, I mean, most people wouldn't know what to do with it. You really have to take these opportunities and grab hold of them, tie a knot, hang on, um, and then hopefully they stick around, hopefully you did enough, and you make a lot of mistakes because it also fast-tracked mistakes for us too, right? We made a lot of uh, bad bad missteps along the way. We've, uh, you know, created some enemies. For us, it, it put us in a position to kind of get a peek behind the curtain, see how the machine works, and uh, fast-track us uh, to, where, uh, to where we are today. And uh, it's been more of a blessing than a curse. You know, I remember uh, Ben Pack, uh, they called and wanted to give us a lift. And I was like, are you sure you got the right phone number? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they gave us this lift and we put it in our shop. And it was there for two or three months. Mm -hmm. And I was still getting a jack out and jack stands and jacking up the farm truck with the lift right there, not thinking, oh yeah, I got a lift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, an Asian would walk in and he would say, how come you're not using the lift? Yeah. Oh, how come we're not using the <laughs> yeah, lift? Yeah. It was just hard to get used to because we were used to the old school way. Yeah. Um, there's another pinch me moment. Yeah. And you know, we had, you had a sponsor in the, Nitrous Express was your very first that's, sponsor. Yes, that's right. Before the show. Yes. And really, it didn't change anything with that relationship or the existing relationships we had. It just showed them that we're loyal. It showed them, hey guys, even though this big moment has happened, we're not going anywhere. That's right. We're going to try to make your brand better if you can help make our lives easier. And that's exactly what happened. You guys have now talked to an uncountable amount of people from all kinds of walks of life. What lessons or lesson have you learned from the last 10 years from all the people that have walked into your lives since wow. the show has begun? It's really done is there's people that listen and people that don't right and you want to surround yourself with people that listen to you you want to surround yourself with people that can learn something from and then you can learn something from them um, but most people in this world want an escape from their own reality 
and I think that this show does that for them. They can live vicariously through our lives and be able to kind of say, well, I did that for a minute, they can go to bed and feel comfortable and, you know, they get a laugh out of what we do or they get an adrenaline rush out of watching what we do. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, most people are just trying to escape their own realities um, while we are trying to shape our own. What is on the horizon for Farm Truck and Asian? Do you guys want to be on television for another 10 years? Uh, what's on the horizon? Uh, you know, with this type of career, I, I think that you have to decide whether you want to maintain fame or you want to begin pursuing uh, other potential uh, passion ideas, uh, things that you haven't got to done, uh, things that you haven't got to do but you now want to do because of your, your time and resources. Um, so, uh, Farm Truck and Asian has existed before the show, it will exist after the show. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Even if the show ends, the people don't end. The lives continue what they were doing before. Um, so I would. there's some things that we would like to do that have nothing to do with entertaining anybody else other than us. Um, and then there's some things that we would like to do brand-wise that would help um, influence people the way Farm Truck is saying has done in the past that uh, can maybe present some new ideas, uh, show them what we're capable of. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're, we're moving on. We're, if the show goes away, um, there's still so many ideas left in the tank that we've yet to uh, show the world. You know, 10 years, 10 years, and to think about 10 more years. Yeah, I can't think about that. You know, and what we were thinking in the very beginning is, you know, hey, maybe we'll get one episode out of this. Maybe we'll get one more in the next 10 years. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, who knows where we're going to be. 10 in, years. In, is that what he said, 10 years? It, that's how Is that long? what you said, 10 years? Is that what it said on 10 the... 10 years. Yeah, we, we got to start with a year. Let's check the calendar, because it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like 10 years, but on the other hand, it seems like it's a both. lifetime it's, ago. It's both. Well, I think in the beginning we were like, okay, if we could beat, if we could, if we could, uh, Orange County Choppers did 10 years. Yes. We said, okay, if we could do 10 years with Orange, as Orange County Chopper, we did it. That's right. right. And I've always hung my hat on that. Uh, I, I need no more than the 10 years that we agreed to in the very beginning. It, shut, right. it shut off right there. Um, I mean, how many more times do you need to do something until you say you did it? How many more stories do we have to tell until we like, oh, we need more right. stories to tell? Um, so for me, now, now it's just um, really just not even a legacy. It's just continuing to do the things that we want to do on our own time and on our own dime. You know, shout out to Orange County. Uh, those boys they taught it. us how to do it. They did you it. Know? Mm -hmm. We were obsessed over the show. We watched every single episode, just like every motorhead did. Um, but they taught us how to interview. They taught us uh, how to act in front of a camera. Yeah. Um, so shout out you, to Paul and, you and know, Junior. There was another thing. You know, it's kind of funny because we're, we're, we're coming around uh, 2000 and that, that 2008 mark. There was that writer strike. Okay, and so a lot of people don't know, they, they ask us, well, what, how did the show take off? How did it get lifted off? There was a lot of things that happened in the moment that the, our show was airing that no one else was looking at. For one, Gas Monkey Garage was slowly on its way out. They had, they had done a pretty good run. They had been on air for a couple years, but, but they, they, they were looking for other car shows. Orange County Choppers was out. Um, uh, Pimp My Ride was out. Uh, Foose is overhauling. He was going out. A lot of car shows were going out. The writer's strike had affected uh, the scripted shows to where a lot of the networks and the production companies were moving over to unscripted reality and a lot of money went into that and the Street Outlaws came about. It was a brand new show about cars with a new demographic and there was a, a, a lot of little moving pieces that uh, the, the, the cast member, the multiple cast, um, the, the budget that made the show a hit and a lot of it was out of our control um, and a lot of it was unknown to us until now but uh, looking back there was it was a perfect storm. That writer's strike uh, helped reality TV. Oh, huge. Um, it was huge. Because they didn't need any writers. It's uh, cheap to do. Here are these re reality guys. Um, yeah, you know, giant mark the camera at them, let them do it for free. So you know, for, pretty much. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> it was pretty much free. It, it was pretty much free. That's it was right. it was negative. We were in <laughs> negative money, bro. We were in credit card debt. Yeah, literally pretty bad. And our first uh, three years into it, yeah, we were wondering, uh, uh, is it worth we it? We were sharing a cup of ramen noodles. No, we were. <laughs> we were at we were at um, 
it was it was a payway, and we would share the let chicken oh, the, lettuce wraps. The lettuce wraps. We had no money, and yeah. we would have to go to PRI. And we were like, all right, we ain't got any money. What can we do? We can get appetizers. Yeah. And uh, we would get the chicken lettuce wraps, and we'd share it. Right. Right. And we get the extra PRI. lettuce. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those those foam noodles. Yeah, we would just, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to extra those foam. Well, we noodles. did it. We did it. We, so we persevered. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, well, good job, man. Yeah. We did it. Thanks, you know? Asian. It's so, been a good ten years. It, it feels like it. It's feeling like ten yeah. years, but uh, it was worth it. And uh, not very many people get this opportunity. This is not something you can fight for and pursue. This is something that has to happen to you. It happened to us. We're grateful for it. But at the end of the day, continue to pursue what you're good at. Love what you do. Uh, surround yourself with people that care about what you do and what you do for them. And uh, hopefully something comes out of it. But if nothing does, it's time well spent. You know what? We should celebrate and go to P.F. Chang's and we could get our own order now. Of chicken I don't want to eat wraps. any more lettuce wraps. I do. No, oh, you still you like know, them? For old time's sake. Oh, for old Let's do it. Okay. All right. Yep. P.F. Right. Chang. Oh, Payway? Is it P.F. Chang? I don't know. I don't know. You can get them at both places, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs>